In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be looking at limiting factors. So remember in a previous video, we looked at how we'd actually experimentally investigate the limiting factors. But now we're going to look at how these limiting factors actually affect the rate of photosynthesis and why indeed they are limiting factors. So a limiting factor is a variable which, when in short supply, reduces the maximum rate of photosynthesis. Now, in order to understand how limiting factors work, we're just going to look at the summary equation for photosynthesis, which, remember, is carbon dioxide plus water. Remember, we need light energy and that we produce glucose, and then oxygen is made as a byproduct. So in terms of our limiting factors, obviously the amount of carbon dioxide is going to affect the rate of photosynthesis, and then also the amount of light energy. Notice that obviously plants need water, but water is not a limiting factor. The last limiting factor you need to be aware of is temperature. Low temperatures will indeed limit the rate of photosynthesis. So if you're asked to list them, number one, carbon dioxide, number two, light intensity, and number three, temperature. And we're now going to have a look at each of these in turn in detail. Now, in terms of how much carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere, it's around 0.04%. Now, below 0.01% carbon dioxide, remember there's a very important enzyme known as rubisco, which is involved in photosynthesis, and that rubisco cannot fix carbon dioxide below 0.01% carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And then as you increase that percentage of carbon dioxide, to 0.04%. So between 0.01 and 0.04% carbon dioxide, you still find that there's a reduced rate of successful collisions between carbon dioxide molecules and the active site of the Rubisco enzyme. Remember that during the process of photosynthesis, Photolysis takes place, which actually produces the electrons needed to convert carbon dioxide into carbohydrates. Now, in low concentration carbon dioxide levels, electrons produced by photolysis are not used up as rapidly as they are produced. And this has the knock-on effect of reducing the rate of photolysis further. Remember that photolysis is the splitting of water molecules one of the key processes involved in photosynthesis. And you often find with carbon dioxide, if you're looking at midday, and so you've got quite a high temperature, so that's not going to be the limiting factor, you should have quite a high light intensity because it is midday. You'll therefore find that carbon dioxide is most likely to be the limiting factor at midday. If we're looking at early morning, late afternoon, it will be a different factor. So what happens at low light intensities? Well, again, you see a reduced rate of photolysis or photolysis. Remember that oxygen is produced as a result of photolysis, so we'll see decreased oxygen released. Now, reducing the rate of photolysis means that we have fewer high energy electrons, and these high energy electrons are needed to convert that carbon dioxide into carbohydrates such as glucose. So if we don't have the high energy electrons, we're not really carrying out the process of photosynthesis. So you get less production of carbohydrates, such as glucose. Now notice that early morning light intensity may be the limiting factor because it will be quite dark. But usually speaking, it is not light intensity which is the limiting factor. Unless the plant is heavily shaded, then really light intensity doesn't tend to be the limiting factor. So early morning late afternoon shady area that's when light's going to be the limiting factor so now let's look at the effect of temperature so how about low temperatures below five degrees celsius this really affects all enzymes involved in photosynthesis so all enzymes involved in photosynthesis show reduced activity remember from chemistry collision theory here's a really basic enzyme it has an active site it has to bind to the substrate now, at low temperatures, they will have low kinetic energy, so few collisions take place. And remember, that substrate must bind to the enzyme's active site in order for the reaction to take place. 
but also be aware that you can't just indefinitely increase the temperature and expect the rate of photosynthesis to increase. You do find that above 30 degrees Celsius, the enzyme Rubisco is less effective, although it's not denatured at this point. And as always, your explanation involves talking about electrons, so you want to say that there are fewer high energy electrons due to a decreased rate of photolysis. So it all links back to being the same thing if in doubt.